So welcome back everybody to the innovation stage. Um, um, it's time to talk about creativity and fun, and fun in the workplace and fun in the office, I guess. Yes. Mitko knows everything about it. Mitko works at Cisco. So what do you know? Things can happen also in the corporate, corporate world, right? Exactly. Okay, take it away, Mitko. Thank you. Hello everyone and good evening. It's a bit late or it's too early for you? Eight? How does it feel? Yes. So today we are going to speak about a single project that we have worked on. Uh, the name of the project is actually Open Berlin. I'm Mitko Vasilev and I'm Chief Technology Officer of the Innovation Center of Cisco in Germany. Our focus is industrial, transportation and logistics. So collaborative robotics, autonomous vehicles, big trains, planes. We're actually extracting data from plane engines. So we have a lot of interesting technology challenges to go after. How many of you are actually focusing on technology and how many of you are, I, who is actually working in technology now? Not so many? No, so. That's our office in Germany. That's the oldest Cisco building. It is built in 1852. How is the, the sound quality? Is it okay on the back? Cool. <coughs> uh, what actually do you know about Cisco? It is a startup founded in 1984. We are public, so we did IPO. Now we are 82,000 people all across the planet. We have also a presence in Amsterdam, close by. We just cross next to the office. And our main, core por main focus was networking in the past. And then we have moved to more and more and more and more focus areas. So we're constantly adding additional areas where we are going and we have sales, engineering, R&D, and we are trying actually to become better and better with the things that we do, which is technology. And Open Burn is a small piece out of the big Cisco. We're in Innovation Center in Schoenberg in Berlin. How many of you have been in Berlin? Oh, nice. And the others, why you haven't been there? Ah, should go. <laughs> so, what we did actually is we took an old factory uh, back in January 2015. So the guys have been building gas masks inside, Begatech, German company, and they had machines and people, so it was actual factory and people were working inside and building more and more production. Then we have negotiated with them and we took over the facility. It is built in 1852, so it's quite cool. Huh? It's also short, sort of a challenge because that's after cleanup. Huh? So inside there have been a lot of dust, a lot of machines. I think the last time that they have modeled something within that space was in the 80s. So since the 80s, they've been just producing inside machinery, etc. And then we took the decision that we want to open an innovation center in Germany. And we decided, okay, let's make the best out of what we have as a space. So we took it in January 2015, and it was ready on 15th of September 2015. So everything that we're going to discuss about the project today actually happened over nine months. Just wait and see how many things we actually have done. How do you start the project? With coffee. The first thing that we actually have selected was the coffee machine, the grinders, and the bones. So these are Italians, really nice people. They came, they have presented different kinds of coffee machines. Uh, actually bones which are roasted in Berlin, so freshly done, fresh grinders. It took us 250 emails to choose the coffee machine and around 70 emails to choose all the grinders and, and everything until we decided actually what to do. Uh, then I had to test nine espressos, a couple of latte macchiatos, and then I did the mistake that 
you know, automatically you're taking Club Mate, which is kind of like a Red Bull. And then next time I have slept was in three days. But we made the choice. So we actually have choose everything. Everything is handpicked actually by Open Berlin. We have not applied any corporate policies, but on the same time, we also have not break a single corporate rule. So everything that you're gonna see is actually by the corporate rules, and we just improve them a bit, so we have not break them. We had to select every single element. I mean, we're tech guys, so think about it. You are working on one moment, you, you have to code, do something, compile and then on the same time you have to choose the mirrors, you have to choose the lamps, you have to choose the chairs. All the furniture inside is actually second hand and refurbished. Everything which was made new, ah these guys are super noisy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everything which was made new was actually made by a small Berlin based companies. The desks uh, we are made by a startup in Friedrichshain in Berlin. Two guys, we have been their biggest customer for six months. All the bars and, and everything that we have built, like uh, the bigger, bigger stuff, was built by a small company of six guys. They are Polish and they, they are living in Berlin. So everything was local. Uh, then we also decided that we need art. But we also want to make a statement. It's not just to go and bring art within your lifestyle space. You also want to make a statement that you're there to stay. So what we did, we actually have painted the walls. So all the white walls. We have worked again with a local artist, Michael, from Berlin, the guy with the hair. Huh? And he was painting in pitch black. So he had to bring his own projectors because at that time there was no lighting, nothing inside the facility. So he was working between 8 p.m. and, ah, oh, these guys are really noisy, <laughs> and like 6 a.m., full painting, different kinds of art. Uh, also, even during the working process, people started actually to meet there. That was actually one of the main ideas of us building Open Berlin, is to get different people to meet inside people that you don't meet during your normal work day. So also the coffee guy met our artists and now they're working on joint projects. So the artist is also painting now with coffee. So people started meeting up and getting all the new ideas of all the different verticals. We have guys who are building electric bikes. We have guys who actually have built our tree house. So they are carpenters. And everyone is bringing some, some different view and some different understanding and a lot of different ideas. So it's not the typical IT setup where you know everything and just by getting the people sitting with you on the table, you know exactly what they're gonna tell you about. It's different people, all the different ideas and different views. And we have a lot of fun, as you can see. Then we actually have took the building to be our own project. There is something which is called building management system, which is an intelligent system within the building where once you press the, la the light switch, lights go on. When you change the temperature, that system is actually controlling the air conditioning, it's controlling the air, etc. So we decided that we don't want to have building management system, but we rather want to build everything by ourselves with partners. So we actually have built ad hoc group of 18 companies. 10 of them are startups, eight of them are big ones. And we have created a complete control of the whole space, of the whole facility from ground up, from scratch for four and a half months. And everything is built by open architecture. So what we have is we have a lot of legacy systems like uh, we have air conditioning and clean air systems, which are not the latest and greatest on the market. So we had to translate in between a lot of legacy equipment. Also, we have installed sensing all across the space. Open Berlin is 962 square meters. And by the date, we have 3,500 sensors inside. We're generating 26 and a half gigs of sensing data a day. 
I'm not counting the audio which goes to the natural language processing systems. I'm not counting the video and metadata generated by them. This is the pure sensing data across the whole space. All the systems within the space, every single boiler, every single lamp, every single door, everything is connected to a single IoT middleware, which is connecting legacy and new. Everything goes to a single artificial intelligence engine, which is actually designing the rules how the building should operate. Uh, we are actually fully preventive. Uh, we are predictive with the building, so it's fully autonomous since March, 2nd of March. We still have a dashboard for the people so they can go and they can control the lightning and they can control the temperature, etc. because people need some time to adapt, to let it go. It's not that easy that you should expect that you're going inside and then everything around you is actually controlling by itself. We also have connected ourselves to the facility. So we are working with Intel. This is almost health, like uh, medical grade equipment, which is actually providing the data about the sleeping pattern, about the stress level and activity level of each one of us. We have OLED lightning inside. Billions of hours, 4,000 steps of dimming. So during the day, we can wake you up in the morning with a lot of blue and white across around you. And then you can calm you down and actually we can extend your ring phase of the sleep by moving to complete yellow gamma in the evening. During the winter time, we're changing the temperature and the hours. So actually the people are feeling warmer, so we pump less heating. During the summer time, we're changing the hour and the gamma. So you just feel colder because it's just a perception in most of the cases. That's the dev kit. Again, the complete architecture of the whole building is built on open architecture, open pro it's built on open protocols. Do you know Docker microservices? Our building runs on Docker. So we have microservices which are connecting to different legacy systems and is translating this legacy air conditioning or clean air systems to something which our IoT middleware understands, MQTT. And then we have other Docker containers who are actually listening with WebSocket from the AI engine to be programmed so we can actually control the environment around you. Because again, everything in that facility, every single element is getting connected. Initially, uh, I mean, we had all these big ideas what we want to achieve, but time-wise it was super short. Uh, so initially, actually that's our <laughs> facility manager, and the light switch is aus and ein, which means off and on. And it was actually powering on the building and shutting down the building. Because we have been late, I mean, we had so many ideas at the beginning, but then 15th of September came and everyone's moving in and you're okay now. <laughs> we cannot control the lighting at that moment. Yeah? So what should we do? And we cannot control the air conditioning. So the weather was nice in September. <laughs> that was good. But then we said, okay, the last person within the facility is switching off the building. The first person goes in and switches on. And think about it, we're working on the same time, AI, machine learning, so the guys are working heavily, looking on what's on the market, as algorithms that we can reuse if they have to develop something. Uh, building all these different APIs, interconnect all the systems, but we are late, so the people are moving in. So we had the semi-autonomous mode <laughs> with a single click. Uh, also, we actually have built a massive scale data center in Berlin. The black container on the back is actually an MSDC. We are pumping 17,800 liters of water an hour to cool it down. We're pumping the water on 10 degrees Celsius, and I can return it on 15 without changing the ecosystem around us. When you're building a data center, you're getting a lot of packaging material because these are a lot of CPUs, a lot of servers, GPUs, etc. So you're getting so much packaging material that we actually got our friend Michael, the artist, back with us. And uh, that's our grand opening. We also have built the keynote demo for our own grand opening. We are building a lot of stuff for ourselves. We love to build chairs and tables because craft skills are key. 
So even the Cisco is a tech company, 82,000 people, we decided, okay, we're going to build the whole keynote demo by ourselves. Michael is wearing a biomechanical bodysuit underneath. It's actually from a startup from, I, I think they are Dutch, Xsense. So they're using this, uh, this bodysuits to generate 3D animation when they need to move the character based on the m natural movement. He's wearing that costume. We were sending all the data to another startup running middleware, and they have been running real-time analytics on every single joint of the human body. We've been dumping the uh, Cassandra database initially just to show how much data is actually generated by a human body. Then we have actually shown to everyone the statistics of every single joint, the calories. I mean, all these details about your human body. So representing your body by the data you actually create. And then we build the avatar and show also the 3D. I mean, it's kind of, you feel like a Daft Punk. Yeah? People are going to understand in 10 years after you launch the show. So <laughs> a lot of people didn't got the whole idea at that time. But the robot itself, it's built only by packaging materials. We have captured the complete data of creation of that artwork. So that's the key element. Now we have the complete data, every single movement of that artist by creating that robot. We actually have bundled the art plus the data and we did an auction on our grand opening. We have collected 12,000 euros and we have donated them to the refugees in Berlin. So that was the keynote that actually brought some value to the local people in Berlin where we have moved in. Now our robot is actually in an, another startup in Berlin, Relair, they, they, they bought it and it's kind of the highlight within their office. We see a lot of Instagrams and tweets, people like it. And now we have even more packaging material, so now we're thinking for the next project, what we want to build next and how we actually want to model the next the next stuff. The Open Berlin is actually the only Cisco facility on the planet where the front door is unlocked. Of course, nine to five, then we are locking it, yeah, but during the work days, it's completely unlocked, so everyone actually can enter in. Because our main charter is actually to bring external innovation and external ideas within the corporate. And you cannot bring them in if the door is locked. I mean, it's a super basic principle. Huh? Also, only 10% of the people who are actually working inside are from Cisco. 90% are externals. We have a super slim team out of six people who are actually working for Cisco itself. Now we are getting a lot of interns from Singapore, from France, from US. So we have interns from everywhere. And their focus is ga gaming, AI, so they do a lot of interesting stuff within coding and development. Uh, and our interns are actually between 15 and 25 years old. Actually, now we have also 27 friends. So we have a very wide range of people with different skills and different skill set. And probably also something more interesting is that more, more people of our team are actually girls than boys which is not that usual for a tech company and like the tech market at all. Everyone's complaining that, okay, there is no gender equity, etc. And in our case, it's exactly the opposite. So the front door is unlocked. After hours, what we actually have done, we have removed the badges. So on, if you work for a corporate, if you work for a big company, you always have a badge. We've placed face recognition all across the space. Because what do you have on a badge is typically you have a number, you have your photo, and then you have different colors in regards, okay, this guy is an employee, this guy is a temp, etc. So it's kind of, you're always attached to a specific number and you're always attached to a specific company. So we said, okay, the people were there because of the main reason to bring their ideas in. So we need actually the people, not identities. So we have removed the badges, no more labeling of the people and you are your own key. It's super comfortable. After so many years wearing a badge, then thinking, oh, where is my badge? Is it in my backpack? Is it, in the, is it somewhere else? Is it at home? Uh, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a simple thing. 
And then Cisco safety and security came. Yeah? Oh, this is going to be a big security risk because you don't know the people who are actually inside. Said fine, I mean, it's not a problem for us. Everyone who is actually in open Berlin is getting two hours of barista duty a week because there is no free ride. Yeah? So when you enter, actually, you're entering across our sort of a coffee shop. So you see all the people coming in, and 99% of them are going to take either coffee or tea from you. So even the most introvert person actually knows everyone. And safety and security approved it. Yeah, it's an official approval. Removing the badges, moving to more social, I know the people that I'm working with. Yes. Activity tracker is mandatory, however. No, no, no. It's purely because I have also my home connected to the same system, and I have the same preferences when I'm at work and in my home. I want to have the same experience. Okay, so they they're not tracking your whereabouts no, with the activity no. tracker. No. Okay. We also have an interesting solution for anonymizing the data. So it is a startup that actually have won the Cisco Security IoT Challenge. So we can actually anonymize the complete data set. It's not human readable. And we can anonymize without deleting anything from the data sets, which is kind of pretty unique. But only this system actually can see the preference and the person attached to it. We are actually now thinking to open all the data via open data API, like CCAN or DCAN, so everyone can actually benefit of 26 and a half gigs of real data every single day. Because it is 25T certified for anonymity, and we are fine. Our charging stations, even they are built by four startups. Right, so, uh, so the parking sensors, the magnetometers are from Park here. We are working with another small startup called Ice Gateway for the lights, beacons, ultrasonic, so it can detect a lot of stuff. It's really interesting. EB for charging stations, another small startup. They're actually from Berlin, which is interesting. In Ocean for the kinetic switches. So these are all small businesses where we actually, we are their customer. Also for the space, there are 10 startups who are providing us services, which is pretty challenging if you are a startup to get a big company to sign up as a service model with you. But we actually have went all through all the pain with legal, insurances, warranties, and everything. So we're actually consuming the production of super innovative companies who are, it's, who are giving a lot of extra, who are doing a lot of extra miles actually, jointly with us. Because we had a lot of ideas and they kind of also delivered on these ideas together with us. We have a tree house, which is also an official meeting room. It has fiber optics, gigabit, it, it, gigabit internet inside, electricity, chairs. It's also a docking station for our robot. Because we have automated most of the functions for which you don't need people to actually do, like cleaning inside, taking care about the grass. Everything is fully automated. And the robot is super peaceful. It's, it works 24 hours. And there are a lot of people who, I, I'm actually not seeing people just sitting in, we have a beer garden also in front, just sitting there and you can, you can watch it for half an hour and clean up the mind and because it's so peaceful, like just watching it going around, it, it's beautiful. It was an effect that we never actually expected at the beginning that we we're gonna get, but then surprisingly, it happened. We actually have removed all the single purpose devices across the facility. There is not, there is one telephone, so there is one telephone from the 60s. That's the only telephone across the whole space. There is no paper printing. Now we are thinking how to become also zero waste. It's something that we are spending a lot of thinking cycles now. Because we still have the trash bins, so we are trying to optimize even even that process. The furniture, it may look new, but it's actually from old Cisco offices, which were closed. Everything which is new, like these tables, as I told you, they are built by small businesses in Berlin. Our lamps, we bought the lamps from the secondary market in Berlin. 
there are no more lambs from East Germany. We've bought them, all of them. I mean, everything. This is our coffee shop. The bar is built by 15 old bars and groceries, etc. And again, because we've been working with that small company out of Berlin, Kwiatkowski, the guy who was working on it, spent so much effort in keeping all these old pieces, because they're pretty old, for a couple of days on minus 30 degrees Celsius, so he can kill all the worms inside. So everyone is putting so much effort. These are things you don't get if you go and buy your furniture from Sweden. Because it's a standard. But these guys, everyone puts so much effort in building, cleaning up the tables, and finishing work. And there is always a personal touch. Even the lamps, I mean, cleaning up the lamps, because some of them have been pretty damaged. So we've put a lot of effort to make it feel like home. Also, we're IKEA free. I mean, there is not a single IKEA item within the space. <laughs> we paid a lot of attention to that. What do you do if you have uh, such a space, but typically the people don't work that much over the weekends? Coding for kids, kids between 6 and 12 years old, using MIT Scratch. So that, that's my daughter, and it's like fully open, voluntarily. Different fathers from different startups are actually the teachers. That's actually a hackathon that we did three weeks ago for the teachers themselves. So we start with the kids. Now, these are teachers actually from schools and, and high schools. So super early grade. We spent three days with them, hackathon, and, and I mean, design thinking, hands on, also designing with easy to use strappy prototyping gear. And then we do also more heavy duty hackathons with people who are finishing here or they're studying, and they do coding, front ends, back ends, full stack, AI, robotics, all the interesting topics. So again, you're meeting a lot of different people that typically you don't meet within your daily life if you work for a static corporate environment. That's the open space. The tables are built by a small furniture startup in Friedrichshain. And we have, I mean, our main focus is actually to work on rapid prototyping, where you're getting several companies, startups, partners, customers, jointly. They work over a couple of weeks, and then they go home after it's done. So you come in three weeks, 16 hours a day, then you leave. So that's the reason we have so much space, because we can actually remodel the whole space based on the active projects. When you have a group which is working on airplanes, we did something for a company which is actually working on airplanes, you're getting all the companies jointly. Tech Mahindra, Bosch, Dassault Systems, Haption, big ones, small ones. Everyone goes inside and everyone works to get it done. We also have a small prototyping space, which is actually designed for soldering, cutting, 3D printing. And when we do 3D printing, we do it the right way. We have bought 50 kilos of filament, so everyone can print as much as he needs. Because in many spaces, people are buying a 3D printer, they are buying two rolls, and then it's gone in one week, and then it's a monument. So everyone is too careful like not to go and print too much. And, and set. We, we said, OK, just print whatever it whatever you need to see how it, actually, how it looks like in the physical world. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> actually. Now we're building a 360 video, video studio because we're dealing with a lot of interesting stuff like co cooperative robotics. That's when you can actually work with the robot on the same table with you. And, and we're getting a lot of alpha products which you, you still cannot buy on the market. We're getting them because we work with this big companies, and we're kind of sharing early within the process. So I said, okay, let's start building all these technical 360 video, video sessions, huh? and then start distributing them so more and more people actually are going to see what we are working on. Because sharing is key. Not everyone has the time to go and explore a single topic over six months or one year. 
and we can summarize everything and give the chance to everyone to be an editor. So you can actually build your own podcast. You can watch exactly what you want to watch out of the whole show. We have built Open Berlin VR. So there is a full VR built in Unity 3D of the whole space. So we can walk inside. If you cannot visit Berlin, you can walk with Oculus. We have also an app on Apple Store and Google Play where you can use the cardboard and you can walk also inside. We have a pure video if you have physical challenges with uh, virtual reality. And we have pure audio if you're blind. So we actually gave all the choices of people to visit Open Berlin. Audio, video, VR. And physical, the front door is open. We have a, an open space where we do a lot of demonstrations for different events. That's actually the mayor of Berlin. We're using a lot of Lego and other easy to use tools that you can actually build your ideas and you can demonstrate what's the final idea without burning millions and burning a lot of teams and burning a lot of time, which gives you a very clear understanding if the idea is the right one or just kill it. That's our massive scale data center. It's fully packed, a lot of gear inside. We're running OpenStack on-premise, so we have Metapod operational. Then the rest of the system is running microservices. We're also big fans of optimi optimizations and dev DevOps. Because we're a super lean team, so we have to automate as much as possible of the daily tasks. That's our no-shoes area. So we actually have banned the shoes on half of the attic. It feels like grass. It's not grass yet. We are still thinking how to make it happen. Because think how cool it is going to be during the winter time that you can go inside and just go barefoot over green grass. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Also, we actually we are getting ready. So everything is designed that we can actually absorb the moisture not to go down. So once we find the right way to replace the fake grass with the real one, that's a project for the late summer. That's my meeting room. So all my meetings are happening within that space. We are meeting a lot of C-level people from customers and from partners. And it's really exciting to get the chairman of the board of some multi-billion company to get the shoes off, sit with you, and then have an hour of discussion. Everyone loves it. It's so simple. Everything that you see. All these things, they are new, but everything is off the shelf. So I have the same sofa in my home, in green and blue, so different colors, but it is 760 euros. So these are things that you're actually going to buy for your home. This is nothing super fancy or out of the moon. These are things that you're feeling cozy and things that are actually practical for daily use. That's our social media marketing. You see, everyone's working hard all the time. We're getting a lot of Instagrams from the hammocks. I don't know why the people are so interested in hammocks inside. So now we're also building hammocks outside with suspension. So actually, two people can go on the same time. And it's small things, they make the difference. And again, everything that you have seen, just to repeat, this is, these are nine months. The whole IoT system running everything four and a half months. But everything, all the elements, choosing them, buying them, building everything with all these companies, these are nine months. Think about how many things typically you do for nine months. That's creativity. And that's efficiency, which is the key element. I mean, everyone can do it if, if everyone burns resources without thinking about the energy of producing goods. We're using so much second-hand and refurbished because we're also thinking about the energy to produce our own space. If something is produced and we can reuse it, we go for it. We don't go just blindly to the shop and go and purchase everything in green or everything in blue. Our covers doesn't match. Some of the chairs are slightly broken, etc. But facts of life, these are the things that you have also in your home. And that's the transition in between workplace and lifestyle space, because that's how you remove the borders. 
That's how you can actually focus to on what's important and what's key. The front door is always open between 9 and 5. Afterwards, if you work with us, you come. We are scanning you for 15 seconds with glasses, then without the glasses, and then you have 24 by 7 access to the space. We love automation, as you can see. We've been playing a lot with robotics and drones over the last couple of years. Actually, several guys have worked with us. They left Cisco, and they have built a rob drones and robotics startup. And now they are working with us, which is a success. That's the real success. If the people leave the big corporate, if they still continue to work with you, that's the major success. So they have really interesting drone middleware, and we are helping them a lot with some know-how and resources. And they have so many new and interesting ideas. But it's beneficial for everyone. And not many corporates are getting it. Everyone is trying to retain the talent. It's not about retaining the talent. It's all about continue working with the same talent over the time, even if they move on and th they do something different. Freelance, build their own company, go to another company. Because if people like you, they work with you. And everything, everything in Open Berlin is all about people. It's all about the people, it's all about the culture inside. You have co coffee duties, we do not tolerate if people are like throwing away stuff, etc. because these are things that you have to obey if you're part of a society. It's all about good, good culture. Can you tell us a little bit about the retention? Retention? How is it working? Of people living and then how they work with us? How are they staying with you? I mean, an interesting success of such a project will be if the people leave after two years with you. And then still work with you afterwards. Because after they leave the company, they develop themselves on different speed, different direction. But then you can always kind of find combined joint business to help each other. So for us, the success in retention is actually stay for as long as you like. But then when you leave, if you want to work with us, that's a success. That's successful retention of the ideas. Because you don't want to retain the body. You want to retain the ideas and the the brain. <laughs> so we have now 20 minutes for discussion. That's what we discussed. Yeah. Because Good this question. is not a PowerPoint deck. I mean, if it was only pure presentation, I would not travel to Utrecht. Hi. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, you obviously have a really nice place there. Uh, I'm interested in how a comfortable place where people feel welcomed and also mm -hmm. very comfortable. But this alone doesn't make you more innovative. Yes. So I'm interested in, okay, culture, fair point. Um, what is your innovation strategy there? I mean, on a higher level, other people make you more innovative. So if you fall within a team where everyone is bombarding you with ideas and everyone wants to experiment, new business models, new technology models, etc., that's the only way to innovate forward. We have also innovation programs which are official within Cisco, like internal innovation. People can build internal startups. We are supporting them. So they're visiting us. They can work with us. We are showcasing them. So we do both. We are doing the corporate metrics where you have the corporate innovation. I mean, ev everything that every single corporate today is doing, trying to retain people somehow inside. And on the other end, we are also getting the people casually in, deciding that, OK, now we want to build cars. And now we are actually working with several startups to produce vehicles, electric, autonomous. That's innovation. It's much more, I mean, you cannot do everything based on processes because everyone can represent something with a process if you have like a good ops manager, but processes and killed by Excel does not help. Okay, so they, you're saying this is more part of an open innovation strategy. It's more focused on external, getting external innovation inside because if I understood it right, you just 
six people yes. of actually Cisco members working there. That's right. Correct. Okay. And we always have someone from Cisco, from engineering, or et cetera, hanging out with us. So it starts spreading. You know, people love good coffee. They love to meet with interesting people, and they love to see the result of their idea now. Not in three years. It's now. <laughs> so could I, what do you do against uh, free riders. It, you said, okay, the coffee is nice, the place mm -hmm. is nice, so I'm working on my project. What are the criteria for me to be able to access it and be around? Because I would, ju I would just go there and mm -hmm. leech from your uh, generosity. Um, we can afford to buy coffees, people. Huh? I mean, coffee is not an issue. If we want to invest time and effort also to build a joint rapid prototype or a new solution, then typically we have a lot of information up front because at Cisco we're also professional VC, Cisco Investments, two billion fund. So we have, if we want to work with startups, we have a lot of information up front about them. Who's funding them, what they do. Of course, everyone knows everyone, so you have a lot of information about startups. If you work with business, big businesses, partners, again, everything is built on a bit loosely, business rules, but again, there are some rules. So for the actual projects where we are also investing effort and focus, there is some business logic behind. But you always want to have also the free riders because then you can use, you can learn some new tricks. Eh? I'm always, oh, I'm almost afraid to ask, but do you have an innovation process to guide or speed it up or slow it down, whatever you want? Do you have a process? You cannot slow down anything. <laughs> I mean, after it runs, people are just getting faster and faster and faster and faster. And we have processes in which we are actually integrating that innovation within the core portfolio of Cisco. So the processes are mainly in regards to how what we work on as a rapid prototype can become Cisco validated design solution and partners can sell it. Yeah, yeah. That's where Life the process management. Life cycle management of the solutions, that's where we pay also a lot of attention because just playing is not enough. Everyone must do also business at the same time. Sure. That's good to hear. Yes. Yeah. It's not completely the free lunch, which does not exist all the time. We have the free coffee, yeah. <laughs> but at the end, there is always business logic behind. Sure. Any other questions for Mitko? Also ideas, eh? I mean, I ideas? told you, there should maybe be some, some new ideas. <laughs> maybe some ambition? Somebody wanted to come over to Berlin and be a part of Open Berlin. Yeah? That's the good thing. Today, everyone can travel everywhere. With the cheap flights, it's 15 euros away. <laughs> Hello. Actually, I want to know which fields of technology are you open for? So, which ideas do you... Our sister specialties are industrial manufacturing, transportation, and logistics. That's where we have a lot of focus and expertise. But then we're getting a lot of interesting ideas around healthcare, etc. And then Open Berlin is one of the nine innovation centers. So we actually are also getting people who are in agriculture and we're connecting them with our innovation center in Australia because that's their focus area. And we also learn a lot of new stuff because it's so interesting. Food production, wow. Is there a specific focus area that's now really taking up, such as health or, I mean, not a coincidence, Tim Cook was talking about health a lot. No, actually autonomous driving is exploding, so every startup is building something around it. Everyone's building a car. I mean, at least if I don't meet a company or a startup which is building a car per day, it's, it's a wasted day. So transportation, all the different kinds of transportation are constantly popping up. You're going to see Dirk. Yeah? He is the CEO of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. So he's speaking also on the party. We've been together with him in Sofia a couple of weeks ago, now in Utrecht. So also all these kinds of transportation, like autonomous driving, Hyperloop, everything is exploding. That's really interesting area. 
Why not sit in traffic and read a newspaper while at it? Yes. Can you please elaborate how do you track uh, personal data of uh, people in the building? I mean, like those uh, health mm -hmm. connected. Like, do, do like, does everyone have to wear some kind of tracker or is it like? No, it's your own personal choice. <laughs> Now we're actually getting better and better, so we just got a new products, which are 3D cameras, which actually can also understand emotions. So we want to remove any kind of technology from you, because even that watch, I need to charge it once every six days. So it's something that you need to think of, and I said. So we want to remove also that piece of the puzzle. But it's in an early prototype. That's the reason we are also removing the whole GUI of the front end. Because now we have a front end, which is a web page where you can go and choose temperature, color of the light, etc. That goes away. And we have a trained NLP, network language processing engine, which is actually listening to you so you can ask for, if the system is wrong, you can ask to get it colder or it's too dark. Voice activated. Yes, Obi-Wan, open Berlin 1, Obi-Wan, it's too cold. We take actions. Because the best UI is no UI. Why you should go on a website or open a... F the system should know your preference. It should know how you like it. And of course, everything fully anonymized. So it's not reversible to the actual person. How do you detect if a room is used, if people are in the room? I mean, we have so much sensing inside that we can give you like details about the gender of the people, like a lot of details. Do you use camera or infrared or what is it? Currently, we're using audio, a lot of audio, infrared yeah, okay. systems. And now we want to add the 3D video all across the whole space. So we're actually, video. yes, so we're going to actually feed the visual cortex we use with much more, more information about people, their feelings at the moment, and we can correlate actually the environment based on that. It's a prototype early prototype, very, very early, but we're getting better and better by the day. <laughs> of course, it's a learning system, isn't it? Yes, and, and yeah. the best is once you start doing it in May, yeah, this year, uh, you're going to be like three years ahead of everyone else who is going to try to do it in 2019. It's all about learning and getting your own experience. We have another question. Hi, Mitko. Um, hey. I have a little question regarding what you just said about um, the battery life of your watch. Uh, how do you think about wireless charging? Um, do you see any future? Uh, so, all these... Maybe for Open Berlin? Is, is there... So, we have different steps. The first one is, if you see some of them are actually slightly open. These are charging stations. So we are waiting for the endpoints, which are actually capable of doing inductive charging. We have an interesting experiment now of actually charging by light, because we can position a high intensity light, which can track the objects and charge like remote sensors. We are also working with several startups like InOcean, who are using pure kinetics. So it's a button, and by the kinetic power of you pressing the button, it generates enough power to transmit the data that there is an action. Even the mouse traps we have are pure, pure kinetic. So, and there, like, we don't kill the mouses inside, but if something goes inside, it sends MQTT message that there is a mouse and we can go pick it up and give it to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and so we love kinetics. We're exploring a lot of efficient ways of actually charging. No? More questions, yes. What were the biggest obstacles in corporate culture? Because you're not, Cisco is not a startup. So we are a startup. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, just bigger one. <laughs> embracing this culture of innovation always uh, faces obstacles in the corporate governance structures, mm -hmm. hierarchies, and everything. What, fa what were the main, challenging, uh, main challenges you were facing by? getting such a beautiful place yeah. done. It was all about starting the engine. So 
Cisco and every big company, they have a, a unit called WPR, Workplace Resources. And they're actually the people who are between us and all the companies building stuff, etc. So they kind of translate our vision to these companies and they do the planning and everything. So just starting the engine to engage these people was a challenge. Initially, they have been the ones who have been always against a lot of these ideas. Like when we said, okay, front door open, the guys, no, no, f forget it, yeah? Having an open space to that size, again, oh, no, forget. So they have been the ones who actually have been stopping us and giving you always like a red light. Then we went slightly above budget at the end, yeah? around finishing sa stuff. And they have been the one that actually have went to the capital review board and said, hey, give the guy, these guys the money now because we must finish that project. So they have been the one that were stopping most of the ideas. Like when we said, hey, we're not gonna have telephones inside. And the guys, okay, I'll now write me down an explanation why to remove telephone, yeah? Because people are gonna ask. But then they like it. And even, even our WPR, they're presenting on external events for facility management, etc. And that's one of the key elements, like, oh, no single purpose devices, no paper printing, etc. So from give me an paper explanation in email, also sign up that you're actually deciding not to go for, huh? to pff, that's awesome. So just starting the engine that everyone is getting involved and everyone is giving you more ideas and buying in, that was the biggest challenge. After it started, Uh, can you please tell us how much did it cost or is it a secret? I can give you a, an estimate in regards to how much it costs compared to another Cisco office in Berlin. We are 15, 1.5% cheaper than the other office on the, like the pure investment side. And then we are much more efficient because the system we have, controlling the lights, etc. I mean, the efficiency level is around 40% more efficient than the traditional one. So the running cost is also extremely efficient. How was the idea originated? Where did it come from? So, <laughs> that, that's a good story. <laughs> Initially, we wanted to build an executive briefing center, EBC, where our customers and partners can go and they can see Cisco router switches, like a lot of tables and showcasing. And then things went a bit wild. <laughs> So the original idea was, let's have an EBC. And then people, again, the engine started, so everyone's like, oh, let's have the refrigerator should have video inside and all that stuff. So from let's showcase routers and switches to, to this. Let's create an experience. <laughs> yes, and, and these things are happening without planning. You cannot go and plan to make an innovation center meeting a lot of companies now because now the trend is that everyone is building an innovation center. So we are consulting them, we are helping them, and, and then when you see how much thinking they are putting behind that, how much Excel files, project plans, they have like 20 people to agree on the chair. You cannot have 20 people to agree on the cover of that chair. It's impossible. Yeah, so you should know what do you do. You should have the right people who are not afraid to experiment and if something even goes wrong, like we've got the system running a couple of weeks after we had to move in, we can find a solution to actually make it running now and then we're going to get better and better with, with time. That sounds great. Any more questions or maybe responses, ideas? How Come to on, apply? you've been so quiet on that side. <laughs> no ideas, nothing after. Like, <laughs> One hour of innovation talk? Or thinking about how to save for a trip to Berlin, maybe? Yes. Yeah. Now, thanks to the cheap flights, it's 15 euros away. 15 euros away, you can go and speak with guys who are actually playing with a lot of stuff that is presented actually around it, and they're playing it like hardcore with hands and garage mechanics. Okay. So if there are no more questions for, um, for Mitko, then... Um actually, if you want to speak with us, because we Cisco, we have a booth, and that's actually the Cisco team, and we're going to be on the booth until the end of the campus party. If you have more ideas that you want to discuss, we're on the booth at 
the entrance. We have good espresso. We don't have the right caps. I don't know why. We've got paper caps. Big mistake, but the espresso, the grinder, and the bones are top. Everything so is there. Visitors. Okay. Then there's this last. There it is. This last formal part of your of your talk. I have a present for you. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's a it tent. Will, or <laughs> it will enable you to join the campuseros in the campsite. You have your own tent. How okay. about it? Or oh. maybe. You have a nice meadow around your building in uh, Open Berlin. I mean, we have an entire team for a party. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank you very much Thank for your you. inspiring speech. Thank you. Thank you.